Hi guys, Hydro here from Hydro Gaming. The day is upon us. It's finally here. Ords and Access pre Premier subscribers on PC now have unrestricted access to Anthem, the long-awaited and anticipated looter shooter from BioWare and Electronic Arts. Ords and Access subscribers on PC and EA Access members on Xbox One now also have access to a t free 10-hour trial of the full release game, regardless of whether or not you pre-ordered it. Although I know they offer this as a ploy to gain subscribers because... Well, they want to make all the money in the world, don't they? It is still nice to be able to play the full game for 10 hours before committing to spending $60 on Anthem. I think EA and Origin Access is about 5 bucks a month or 30 bucks for the whole year. It's a great deal if you like EA's older games. It gives you access to pretty much their entire library, excluding any new releases from EA. Sorry, PlayStation folks, I got nothing for you. Head back to camp. For you guys, and anyone who doesn't fall in the above situations, you'll have to wait until February 22nd to join your fellow freelancers. Which brings me to my very first complaint. With different editions of the game available for pre-order, and different tiers of subscription services, and the game being available to play at different times, depending where you fall within this clusterfuck of purchase scenarios, EA actually had to release a chart so people could decipher when they could start playing. The release of video games has gotten so complicated you need a friggin' chart to understand what you're paying for. There's similar situation with The Division 2, which I'll cover next month, but I digress. Although annoying, it's ultimately a minor gripe with no ramifications past the 22nd. It shouldn't have any impact on your decision to buy the game. It hasn't affected mine. If people are willing to pay extra money to play a game early, power to them. Whatever helps keeps games from going above $60 is okay with me, to a point. I guess I should actually be thanking them, so thanks guys. Looks like PlayStation players get to live the simple life where Anthem is concerned. They have to wait till the 22nd. Has Bioware redeemed themselves for the absolute horrid release and mixed reception of Mass Effect Andromeda? Or has EA rushed another unfinished dud out to the masses? Let's find out. Anthem is a new looter shooter developed by Bioware, known for games like Knights of the Old Republic, Jade Empire, Dragon Age, and Mass Effect, as well as, for old school PC gamers like myself, Neverwinter Nights. Anthem is published by Electronic Arts, and I know just saying, saying Electronic Arts just ugh, tastes bad, but wait, we'll see. I will say, Anthem's launch has been one of the better launches of a AAA release I've experienced in a while. The demo didn't fare as well as Bioware had probably hoped for, but that's in the past. In my opinion, that so-called demo wasn't really a demo at all, because to me, demo implies a small, playable, or unplayable snippet of the full retail game, what we're going to get. And that wasn't what it was at all. It was tailor-made. It had absolutely nothing to do with the full game. It was just kind of showcasing things you could do in the game, but they weren't actually things in the final game. The bottom line here is, if Bioware had called it what it was, and it was a friggin' beta test, that's what it was, there probably wouldn't have been all this flack from the player base that was over the technical difficulties and such. I'm not one to linger over semantics, though, and that demo or beta or whatever you want to call it shouldn't have any influence on the review of a final product. In any case, the technical issues in the demo were not present to me in the retail version on both Xbox One and PC. On the PC, I didn't experience any bugs at all. That, not, nothing major anyway, I mean, a couple graphical glitches, whatever, but nothing game-breaking. I have seen complaints online about long load screens. I have two SATA 3 solid state drives in RAID 0 in my computer, and load times for me were what I would consider acceptable normal. Um, I imagine people with PCI Express NVMe drives will have an even better experience. If you still have a mechanical drive in your gaming PC, well, uh, let's be honest, in 2019, that's a pretty important component to include in a gaming rig. And if you don't have one, you should expect longer load times. On Xbox One, load screens were considerably longer, but they seem to be pretty on par with other such games I've played on the Xbox One that's not any longer. Uh, the load screens are a static screen with a progress bar on top, which could definitely give the perception to people that the load screens are longer than they actually are. I think maybe Bioware should employ some sort of tactic to disguise the load screens. Like maybe just have your javelin soaring towards the atmosphere or something like that. So it looks like you're doing something when you're not actually doing something. And I think that would alleviate a lot of the complaints. On the Xbox One, I experienced two total bugs during my playtime. Uh, the first one, I was put into this sort of ready room where you can swap out javelin equipment, uh, access some vendors, stuff like that. And on one side of the room, there's a door that leads into the main city. And I walked up to it and it wouldn't open. 
and I was pissed. I thought I was fucked. I thought I was trapped in this room forever. That was it. My time in Anthem was over. Uh, I tried force quitting the game and re-entering. I was still stuck in that room. Finally, before throwing my controller across the room, I thought I'd walk over to the other end of the room. I launched an expedition, and that put me back in the open world. Then I could leave the expedition, and I ended up back in the main city. I've been in that room a few times since, and the door has opened into the city like it's like it's supposed to. Uh, the second bug I experienced on Xbox, it was minor. Uh, my game froze while I was launching an expedition. I had to force quit and restart the game. I honestly can't think of any game I've played on the Xbox where that hasn't happened to me at least once. Uh, I'm usually impressed if it only happens once, so, so far so good. Uh, other than my Vega 64 fan annoying the shit out of me by sounding like a jet aircraft while I was playing the PC version, um, my playtime was relatively smooth and problem-free. Frame rates appear to be good and steady. I experienced no lag or rubber banding that others have reported. Uh, reading comments and stuff online, I've seen a pretty clear indication that, as usual, the Xbox version is having less problems than the PC version. I normally expect that. A console you program for very specific hardware, everyone has the same hardware across the board. PC gaming, it's, it's, it's the fucking Wild West. Uh, literally an infinite number of builds and configurations across millions of computers. It's, you can only do so much before release. I do expect that Bioware is collecting data, and I think that most of the issues will re be resolved either by the 22nd or shortly after. That's, that's my prediction. Um, all in all, good launch, so thumbs up to Bioware, and I guess EA, you, you did good this time for now. In Anthem, players take on the role of a freelancer. You know, a mercenary, gun for hire, basically. Uh, you can pilot one of four Iron Man-like suits called javelins, each with a different role or function. Now, the first one is the jack-of-all-trades javelin, uh, called the ranger. He's well-balanced. He does everything well. Doesn't excel at anything. Um, if you don't know what you would like to play first, I, I would choose the ranger as, like, your default. Um, you don't get to unlock another javelin until level 8, and it would really suck if you chose one of the other ones that are more specialized and you didn't like it because you'd be stuck with it for eight levels. If you take the ranger first and then you take one of those second and you don't like it, at least you can go back to the ranger. The, the ranger fits just about all play styles. Um, most people will know how they like to play these games. But if you're unsure, then I highly recommend just, just start with the ranger. Uh, the next javelin is called the Colossus. As the name would apply, this class is a big, beefy, heavily armored powerhouse. Uh, he's slow, he's awkward. Uh, the Colossus's approach to combat is to get in your face and kill the enemy before they can do enough damage to kill you, basically. Uh, tank class. Um, but also, with some long-range abilities, uh, giving the Colossus a supporting role in addition as a long-range artillery platform. The Colossus is the only class available that can carry and use heavy weapons, and due to their massive size, because they got big old meat hooks on them, they are unable to use the smallest class of weapons such as pistols and submachine guns. Then we have the Storm. This is your caster DPS class, your wizard, your sorcerer. Lightly armored and squishy, the Javelin specializes in dealing massive amounts of elemental damage from a distance. Uh, the Storm Javelin can use any weapon class except for heavy weapons. Last, but certainly not least, we have the Interceptor. Fast, agile, light on its feet. This javelin mostly closely relates to a, a row-type class, I guess. Uh, it's got dual daggers, uh, some stuns, and some poison-like abilities. Lightly armored, incredibly swift, hit-and-run tactics is uh, kind of the play style here. And they can use all weapon classes except for heavy weapons. Suits, they have their strengths and they have their weaknesses. It's Good to see a javelin for basically any preferred playstyle you have. Uh, I really like that your character isn't limited to one javelin. A new one unlocks at certain levels while you're playing. So by the time you reach the end game, you have all four classes available to you. You don't need to create a new character and replay and replete the grind. You just have to jump into a different javelin. I, I really like that a lot. You can customize your Javelin, the customization system is, is really robust and extensive, and I see lots of rumor that it can add more later. Uh, you can change both the texture and color of every part. Uh, people who are big on customization, you can spend hours just doing this, especially when you have four javelins you can customize, so you better clear your calendar. Uh, for the person inside the javelin, 
there's not really much customization at all. You choose a male or a female. And you choose from a selection of a dozen or so faces, and that's it. That's who you are. It's not a deal breaker for me. Uh, it's kind of painful walking around the city not in your javelin. You're slow. You, you can't run. You, it, it sucks. Anyway, uh, the less I have to look at myself, the better. So I'm glad they focused on the important part, which was the javelin. Now, if we get into the storyline, the story so far is all right. Uh, I feel like the content at release is just the beginning, uh, a prologue of sorts, maybe. The story isn't just contained with what you get on release day. It's meant to be expanded upon over the months and years to come. If you look at it like a typical game with a beginning, a middle, an end, a climax, all that stuff you expect from a typical story, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, this story is meant to be ongoing. Uh, a powerful enemy has their sights on your home city or fort. You've been contracted to find out what it is they want and to stop them. Uh, the story isn't boring or an afterthought, at least in my opinion. It's just the start of a much bigger, grander version of Bioware's vision. I hope. Anyways, uh, if I'm wrong about that, sorry. Now we get into some of the stuff people have been on the edge of your seat about. They've been waiting for this. Microtransactions. You cannot have a discussion about a game in 2019 without exploring how badly a company is going to gouge its player base after they just purchased their game for $60. While you may be pleased to know that the microtransactions in Anthem, at least to me, are at an acceptable level. Uh, there's two types of in-game currency. There's one called coins, and you earn that just by playing the game, by doing normal activities. Uh, and then you have shards, and those can be bought with real money. The in-game store, it has cosmetics, and it does have crafting materials. However, you can only use sh shards to purchase cosmetics. Crafting materials can only be purchased with coins that you earn through playing. For my playtime so far, it looks like coins are gained at a pretty acceptable rate. Uh, rare cosmetics cost about 14,000 coins each, while the epic cosmetics run for 60 grand. Uh, so far, anyways, it looks like you can afford to buy an epic piece for customization every few weeks or so. Uh, for the average player, mileage will vary depending on your playtime. But the good news is they are earned through completing regular activities. Uh, you don't have to spend hours completing tedious tasks just for the purpose of farming coins. Um, each time you finish an activity, you get your player experience, and then you get something called Alliance XP. And... The more you get, the higher your tier goes. Uh, at the end of the week, whatever tier you are, that's your coin payout. And it resets every week. And it also looks like you get bonus coins for how well people on your friends list do. So it might be a good idea to pad your friends list in preparation for Anthem. Um, so that's all a plus. Uh, I don't mind if cosmetics exist and you can buy them for real money, so long as it doesn't have a negative impact on my ability to experience the game I just paid $60 for. It's also worth noting, uh, when I started a character on both PC and Xbox, my character had 40,000 coins to spend. I haven't pre-ordered or anything. Uh, I am an EA Access subscriber on Xbox One and an Origin Access Premiere on PC. So hopefully that's not why I got the coins. I should probably look at that. But for now, I don't really know how I got those coins. Hopefully everyone just gets them. That would be pretty awesome. So now we get into some of the gameplay mechanics. Uh, the gunplay in Anthem, it's pretty average. Exactly what I would expect from like a, in a third-person shooter. It's fun and enjoyable. It works well. There's just nothing really special about it. In my opinion, Anthem shines best with its mobility you have while you're in the javelin suit. You can run super fast, and you can leap into the air, and you can just blast off like a jet. Turn on your afterburner, just give her barrel rolls the whole nine yards. Then you just go seamlessly from rocketing through the air, dive underwater, swim around, cool off your engines, come back up again, back in the air. Uh, you use water and wind from nose diving straight at the ground. It cools your engines, increases your flight time. Uh, controls on PC, for me, they weren't awesome. Uh, it was better in the retail version than the demo. It's still really hard to control the flight properly with a mouse. Uh, I switched to a controller, and it felt a lot better, a lot more natural. It's going to come down to personal preference, I guess. Uh, there's no PvP. Uh, aiming with a controller in third person 
isn't as bad for me for first person. Uh, you can use whatever you prefer. There's really no downside, and you're not at any kind of disadvantage. Now, there is a fair amount of stuff to do in Anthem. Uh, there's story missions. There's side missions. Uh, strongholds basically are Anthem's version of dungeons. Uh, what Anthem really lacks right now is variety. Uh, the narrative changes depending on what you are doing, but the actions, the missions, or the dungeons have you perform, they're pretty repetitive. It's a lot like what you would expect from a World of Warcraft like gathering quest. Uh, for example, uh, the stronghold I did, it went like this. Uh, go gather a bunch of echoes, bring them back while you're fighting hordes of enemies across the entire map. Uh, then a chest will spawn, you'll open it, you'll collect loot, and you'll carry on the next area. In the next area, you'll collect X amount of artifact pieces, bring them back while fighting hordes of enemies. Next phase, guard this platform for five minutes while fighting hordes of enemies. Your chest spawns, get your loot, carry on. Next area, kill this boss while hordes of enemies spawn, and mission. I will say, the stronghold was fun and challenging. Uh, I've ran it twice. The first time my group wiped three times, we, but we made it through. Uh, the second time, my group made it through. No wipes. That's pretty good for a random group without any voice communications. Uh, the Stronghold does have varying levels of difficulty. I haven't got to try to higher levels yet. But I would imagine that having a solid group together with voice chat would be an asset going forward into later difficulties. Uh, loot drops are plentiful. I mean, plentiful. You get an insane amount of loot, and I think that's fucking awesome. After completing the Stronghold especially, I had up to 25 pieces of loot to sort through afterwards. And half of those were uncommon, green. Um, I th again, I think that's absolutely awesome. It's a looter shooter, so bring on as much loot as you can throw at me. Um, currently, there's no player versus player activities in Anthem. As far as I know, there isn't any plans to add any. If PvP is important to you, you won't like Anthem. On the positive side, balance isn't really an issue so much in a purely PvE game. So there should be no crying and shouting for nurse. So take the good with the bad, I guess. This whole aspect of the game, Anthem is designed to be a very, very social game. It, everything is designed so far to be completed by a group of four players. Everything. Uh, story missions, dungeons, everything. When you start an expedition, you can switch your privacy settings to allow you to do things solo. But I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, even the game will warn you. The game is not meant to be to be played solo and if you try you're gonna have a rough time uh, it doesn't matter if you're by yourself or in a full group of four the enemies aren't gonna scale they're gonna be the same difficulties same health same damage same everything uh, you will most likely be in for a very frustrating time if you try to solo content meant for a full party even in free roam i really, i went out just to fly around have some fun and test out the controls I'd come to areas where I would just get swarmed by enemies and just die over and over and over again. Uh, if you're a player who doesn't want to party up for everything you do, you'll probably want to skip Anthem. Uh, maybe that'll change in the future, because uh, I know when I played Destiny, I played all of the story content by myself, and I just tuned up for strikes and everything else. The same with the D Division. Division, I rarely grouped with anybody. I did most of it solo. But this isn't those games. If this is the direction Bioware wants to go in, fine. Uh, I don't mind. Uh, the matchmaking seems to work great. And that's really all that matters to me. So, good job. I do have one really big issue with Anthem. It, it's almost game-breaking for me. Not quite, but pretty fucking close. Uh, like other games in this genre, there are certain areas where if you are down by enemies, you can't respawn. You have to lie there disabled. There's a big red caution sign covering your entire screen, and you're there until a member of your party comes over and revives you. And that's pretty normal, right? Except in this case, when you're down, you're fucking down. You can't access the menu. You can't quit the mission. You're stuck there. If your party runs off without you, without reviving you there's nothing you can do about it. I actually had to force quit my entire game and load it up all over again just to get out of it. Again, this is a really huge problem for me personally. Uh, I feel like it needs to be addressed and it needs to be addressed soon. I understand the desire to, pre to prevent players from bailing mid-dudgeon or whatever, but this is a horrible way to go about it because some people are just dicks and 
they'll just leave you there just to be a dick. And we all know there's people like that. And it sucks, but I don't want to be stuck there. So Bioware, fucking fix it. Next up, we look at the uh, DLC offerings for Anthem. Uh, DLC is apparently free for Anthem. I don't know if that means all DLC for Anthem will be free going forward. I don't think so. That's not really a sustainable business model for a game that's supposed to be updated continuously for the foreseeable future, like years. I'm talking years. I don't currently see microtransactions as a very sizable revenue stream for Anthem. Uh, I think it's more likely that it would be like the Division 2, where year one DLC will be free, which is okay with me. Uh, $60 for a full year of content, that's pretty good in this day and age. Uh, considering the trend in the past was you'd have to spend twice that. Destiny 2, assholes. The first bit of content drops in March. It's entitled Act 1, which is why I called the current release a prologue. Among other things, it will add a new stronghold to the game, and then we will have Act 2 and 3 coming, presumably later this year. It's interesting to note that the Act numbers are double digits as well, so uh, Act 01 instead of Act 1. Uh, could possibly maybe indicate that there are plans to have at least 10 acts, and that sounds pretty good to me. Now, that's not to say we would get all 10 acts for free. I think we're going to get uh, acts 1, 2, and 3 for free, but all we can do is wait on that one. All that being said, uh, it's time to wrap things up here. Does Bioware have a win? I have to say yes. If you like grindy, looty games like World of Warcraft or Diablo 3, and also like third-person shooters... Anthem is pretty good marriage between the two. Uh, the story does leave something to be desired currently. I fully expect that to improve as things unfold over the next three scheduled acts for release. I personally am satisfied with my purchase just for my playtime in the base game. I've certainly paid more for less. And with free DLC on the horizon coming out as soon as March, that's just gravy. It still remains to be seen if Anthem will have the issue that other games and service products have experienced in the past, which is not being able to put out new content quick enough to keep the player base engaged and interested. Perhaps players might be a little more patient waiting for new content if they don't have to spend 60 bucks on a season's pass for it. That remains to be seen. We also have to wait and see if this whole store thing is just a bait and switch because we have had that in the past. If the store and the monetization stays the way it is now, I'm okay with it. So we'll just have to hope for the best on that. Uh, anyone who is very PvP-oriented, there's nothing for you in Anthem. You're going to have to keep playing Destiny or whatever your flavor of PvP game is. It's purely PvE. Uh, that about does it for me. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for watching. If you like my video, please feel free to click the like button below. And if you want, feel free to click subscribe right beside it so you can see whenever I put out new videos. I'll see y'all next time.